This is not a test. Stand back. Watch the bomb drop. YouTube, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Dr. James Z, the Fresh Pharmacist. And today what we're gonna go over is a few things regarding the use of your thyroid medication and possibly the way you may be taking it incorrectly. Okay, so just a quick little recap regarding your thyroid or the fact that it's probably not working very well. It happens to millions of people each year, so you're not alone. It's basically a gland that secretes hormones that keeps your body functioning and working the way it was designed. Problem is, when it's not working the way it's supposed to and it's not secreting the right amount of hormones to keep you functioning, you have a lot of side effects that over time can lead to a lot of severe complications. So side effects can actually include fatigue, obesity, thinning hair, irregular periods, and even decreased or slowed heart rate. So if you guys come into the clinic and we find that your thyroid isn't working the way it should, what's the first thing that we're gonna go and give you? It's gonna probably be this guy, Levothyroxine. It's a synthetic medication that's pretty effective at getting your thyroid levels to where it needs to be for your body to work properly. Okay, so follow me through these next few key terms and concepts. Hopefully it'll prevent any long-term complications that we can knock out before it really becomes problematic in the future. All right, you guys, so let's go over some of these tips when you're taking your levothyroxine or any of your thyroid medications. So you should not be taking your levothyroxine or any of your other thyroid medications with any other food, medications, or herbals. And I already know what's gonna happen because you guys always ask afterwards, well, well, can I take it with my morning cereal? Nah, nah, you can't. But what about my coffee and a little cream? Uh, no, no, you can't. No, you can't, sorry. But you know what you can take it with? One of these. So it's been shown that when you take levothyroxine with any sort of food or beverage rather than water, it reduces the absorption by 20%. So it's really important that when you take your medication that you not have any other food or medication for at least a minimum of 30 minutes afterwards. The next tip when taking your thyroid medication is to make sure that you don't take it with any other calcium, magnesium, or iron containing products. That means your Tums medications, your Pepsid ACs, which also contain calcium and magnesium, and also your daily multivitamin like your Centrum, which contains calcium and iron products inside. So also that means no dairy products, your cheeses, your milks, or all those calcium or iron containing products, it's important that you don't take it for at least four hours after taking your thyroid medication. So this is an important tip if you've been on a thyroid medication for a while. So sometimes you may get different manufacturers and we may give you a pill that may look slightly different from one pill to the next. You should always try to get the same medication, the same manufacturer from your pharmacist. If for some reason they have trouble getting one manufacturer and we only have one in stock, You'll definitely want to make sure that in 8 to 12 weeks you get your new labs drawn so we can make sure that the medication is still effective as it was previously. Sometimes different manufacturers might have slight variations, but those slight variations can be enough to cause slight changes, increase or decrease in your thyroid levels. And oh, for all my foodie veggie eaters out there, you know who you are. There's a lot of common foods out there that can actually cause hypothyroidism, especially if you're already iodine deficient or have low thyroid as well. We like to call those goitrogens. So goitrogens are anything that can cause the enlargement of the thyroid, which is a goiter, as well as hypothyroidism. So many of your green leafy vegetables are known offenders for causing hypothyroidism. So any of those foods can be your cauliflower, your Brussels sprouts, your corn, your kale, which is a known offender, and also soybeans, which causes the decreased production of your thyroid hormone. So if any of these foods sound like it's a staple of your diet, it might be in your best interest just to remove these particular ones from your diet, it might cure your thyroid problem. So if you remove any of these goitrogens from your diet, it won't happen or go back to normal overnight. It may take between three to six weeks for it to return to normal. So give it a little bit of time before expecting any results. And lastly, there's a number of different drugs that can cause or result in hypothyroidism. So a lot of those can be your steroids, like your prednisone or your hydrocortisone. Also amiodarone, drugs used for the heart, and propanolol and lithium. That was a very short list of medications. If you look down below at the link, I gave you a list of medications that you can click on to see if you fall into any of those categories. If you do notice any of those drugs that are on your list, then you might just want to hit up your doctor and see if they need to make some sort of adjustment based on the medication that you're on. But those are a few quick tips for anyone that's on any sort of thyroid medication. If you have any friends or family that might be on any thyroid meds, why don't you shoot them this link and maybe it might help them out if they're still complaining about any sort of fatigue or tiredness or obesity weight gain that they just can't explain. It might be something that's related to their thyroid. So if you're feeling what I'm saying, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button at the bottom below. Till then, it's your boy, Dr. James Z, the Fresh Pharmacist. I'm out, peace.